Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm taking a photo and I'm approaching it from the standpoint of a new user to Luminar Neo and specifically what I would do to learn Neo if I was new to it. So I'm going to walk through kind of how I would approach a photo and share some thoughts about what I think would give you the best long-term results and benefits in terms of learning Luminar Neo. So I've got a photo here, and for me, now I, I did already crop and straighten the photo. I did that prior to starting the video, but other than that, I've got an unedited photo, no changes, blah, 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 right? So I wanna jump into these tools or filters and start making some adjustments, but if I'm new to Luminar Neo, I personally think the most bang for the buck, for lack of a better word, is not really jumping into the AI tools, but rather starting with raw develop. Now, I highly recommend shooting raw files. You have more data in those files, a bit more leeway in post-processing, but you know it's tempting to jump into Accent AI and just drag the slider and get a nice pop in your image, or if you're a little bit further along or more comfortable with tools, maybe super contrast to adjust the light and things like that. But I really think if you spend time here in the develop raw tool, you will get more bang for the buck. You'll learn more about how edits uh, affect an image, and you'll end up learning how to better control the light, the color, and things like that in your images. So I'm gonna walk through some aspects, and now I can't cover all this in depth because it would make a very long video, but I wanna point out some of the places where I think it makes sense to spend some time getting to know Develop Raw, which will help you overall better understand how to edit your photo, and then you can use my videos or somebody else's videos, whomever, to learn more about a lot of the other tools here in Neo. So the first section is camera profile. I do recommend experimenting with this just to see what happens. So for example, if I click on camera light, you can see, I mean, I've already got a nice looking photo that's popped it quite a bit. As the name implies, it has lightened up the image and I think that looks quite good. So that might be something to experiment, but if you don't, I typically uh, and often start with just a Luminar default because I like to come into this light section, let me close curves, and experiment there because for me, I'm all about getting the light set before I do really anything else. So for me, this might be a little bit of a bump in exposure, maybe a little bit of contrast, perhaps pull down the highlights a little bit and bump the shadows. And in doing so, you can see the photos slightly adjusted. So that's what it started at. That's what it looks like. Now a really handy tool is the histogram in this section here above your crop tool. And if you hit the J key, you'll see it turns on these two little dots. And those two dots are basically the indicators that let you know if you've got some blown out sections of your photo where the highlights are basically blown or where you've crushed the shadows. And so if you crank up the highlights like this and maybe come into blacks and whites as well, when I get too far, you'll see the red starts to show up in the areas that are blown out. That's basically telling me, hey, you've blown it out here. It's not recoverable. So you wanna be careful. It's a good way when you're adjusting the light to come in and make sure that you're adjusting it within the bounds of you know, not uh, blowing things out. Now the reverse is true for the, the dark area. So again, I can play with the blacks and the shadows. And when I get too dark, areas that show up in blue are gonna be indicating that, hey, this is complete black. There's no basically visibility into that area. So use that J key to help you control the light and use those as kind of your boundaries for lack of a better word. So having done a little bit of that, um, I typically will pull the highlights down slightly and the shadows up slightly. And then depending on the image, I might increase or decrease the whites or blacks, kind of depending on what I'm going for. Now, a lot of people will drag the blacks a little bit further just until they start to see the blue and then pull it back slightly so they maybe have just a tiny bit of blue like that. That's indicating that you've got some pretty good contrast in the image. And you can do the same with the whites. You can drag the whites, and I'm getting all the way almost to 100 before I start to get a little bit of blown out, and then people will often pull back slightly. I tend not to do that quite as much. I just kind of visually go by what I like. So I'm gonna reset whites and blacks, and you may or may not use whites and blacks in every image, but it's definitely worth experimenting with. For me, I like a little bit of contrast in my image. I don't want it over the top contrast, but I also don't want a flat image that's basically revealing everything in the shadows. I like to have a little bit of shadow, so I might lift the shadows a little bit, maybe just the blacks. It just depends. Every image is a little bit different. The point is experiment, but get to know these two tools and use the J key there 
to help you better control that. Now, having said that, that leads you into curves. Now, curves is the most powerful component really in any editing program. Curves is typical in, in really any editor, but it gives you massive control over light, but also color. This won't be a deep dive on it simply because it's too much to cover, but a lot of people might come in and just make a standard kind of S curve where you come in and build a little bit of an S shape here. Now there's different sections to curves. This first one is just the tones, whereas the next three are the RGB or red, green, and blue color channels. I'll go into that in a second briefly. Again, I don't want to make too long of a video for you, but you can see I've got a nice little bit of contrast. I've got this histogram visibility kind of in the background of my curves in case you like to use the histogram as a guide for your editing because it can give you a good idea about your distribution of light. Again, I tend to go based on how does it look to my eye, but histogram is certainly a great tool to help you control the light and have visibility into the distribution of light. These color channels each represent uh, the red, the green, or the blue, respectively. So you can come in here and get a little bit more blue or a little bit more red, depends on what look you're going for. Over here on the green, you've got green and magenta. So in this case, I might would go a little bit more toward the magenta to create a little bit more of that kind of color in the image. I don't think I'd want a green in a sunrise like this. And then the blue is either the blue or the yellow. Now I've got a video about curves up there. If you wanna dive into this in a little bit more depth, I recommend checking that video out and just experimenting. You're not gonna break anything, but it's an incredibly powerful tool that gives you massive control over light and color, two primary aspects of editing a photo. Speaking of color, the next section is white balance. And again, I recommend taking your time, experimenting here and really getting to know these tools. If you have a raw file, you've got three different ways that you can set up white balance. You've got this drop down menu, which on a non raw file will just show up as shot. But on a raw file, I've got these different settings that I can click. And as you can see, it adjusts the white balance accordingly. I tend to leave it as shot and you can see the temperature and tint sliders move for each one of these. Um, I tend to do that and then move these sliders to taste but you can also come in with this little dropper tool and it basically asks you to pick a target neutral and let's say something like that once you click on that because you're telling that it's a target neutral it's going to adjust the white balance accordingly again i tend to leave it as shot i tend not to use the eyedropper and i tend to prefer just to come in on these sliders and move them because what i often find is the drop down is never exactly what i want and the eyedropper never gives me exactly what I want. So in either case, I tend to end up moving the sliders to customize it. So over time, I've just kind of decided I'll just move the sliders from the get-go because it gives me exactly what I want. I can dial it in specifically. So again, here, if you want a little bit warmer photo, drag the temperature to the right. In my case, I want a little bit more tint. I might drag that a little bit to the right and create a little bit more of that magenta feel personal preference, edit as you see fit, season to taste, all those kind of things. But keep that in mind, you've got massive control over the white balance. In addition to that, you've got saturation and vibrance, which, uh, you know, as the name implies, saturation is, of course, the intensity of the colors, all the colors across the image. Vibrance, in my eye, sort of pops the non-dominant colors. I tend to use that one a little bit more because it can keep your colors from getting over the top too quick. But like anything, season to taste. You've got sharpness here, so this is going to help you get those little bit crisper look overall to your image, especially on some of the finer points. And so I need to zoom in here. And if I show you the before and after, now that's a before and after for the whole photo. So it's going to have slightly different colors and light distribution, but not quite as crisp. And I've added about a 20 roughly on sharpen. It's a little bit crisper. So I just recommend going gentle here but it can give you a nice little pop in your photo. And having done that, noise reduction is also built in. So I'm just gonna pop the luminosity and the color noise reduction. And you can see it's done really a nice job of getting some of that a little bit of grain that was in the sky. You can see a little bit of noise there. And now that noise has been removed. Now this is a delicate dance between how much noise reduction do you add because it smooths out the details. Um, and then the sharpness was kind of accentuating some of those. So you gotta be careful there to get the balance that you want, which means I highly recommend zooming in and being careful. In this case, I'd probably pull that back a little bit, but overall you can get a nice balance between how detailed or sharp do you want your photo and how smooth do you want your photo to be in certain areas. And the last two sections of develop or develop raw 
are the optics and the transform. Now optics, as you can see here, it's gonna give you the ability to automatically fix distortion. Some lenses, especially wide angle lenses, you're gonna get some kind of distortion in your image and this can help correct that. You can of course dial that in and you've got additional settings here. Again, worth experimenting with depending on the photo that you have. And transform is the last one and transform doesn't really come into play here. But if you're shooting kind of a wide angle lens and you're shooting a building, you will often see that those buildings are leaning backwards. Dragging this vertical slider to the left can help bring them a little bit forward. So you can see some of that, how that will impact the photo here. You can see how it's sort of tilted forward, which can be useful on some landscapes as well. I typically use it on architecture. The point is you've got controls here. Again, all of this together can make a massive impact on your photo and the overall result that you get. There's my before and there's my current state. Now, personally, I would go in and do other things after having done these things in Develop Raw, but if I was starting with Luminar Neo and I was new to this tool, I would spend a lot of time honing my skills with the different aspects and different sections here in Develop Raw because it is the most powerful tool. It will give you a massive amount of control over the light and the color and things like that. As you master these and become more familiar with them, you will get better results. So, Hope that gives you some ideas. I highly recommend spending a lot of time with it. It's super powerful and it's the tool that I always start with when I'm editing. Thanks for watching my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves and until then, adios.